So this is going to be a nice and quick tutorial about how to get uh, liquid or liquid in quotations inside geometry nodes. Uh, we're basically going to fake it, uh, but the cool thing is you'll be able to see it in real time and change it in real time. And it's really not that hard to set up. So uh, also we'll get this really cool wave effect that you can use on any surface. I think that's also pretty cool. And yeah, let's just jump into it. This is Blender 3.1 better this is important because some people always ask me why are certain nodes missing uh, make sure you're using blender 3.1 beta basically the latest download right now from the uh, website and let's just uh, go ahead and spawn in a bezier curve uh, that's what's going to be controlling our liquid i'll go into my do node setup just make sure you have geometry nodes editor opened anywhere and click new to add that in the modifiers and then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the original cube because I want to focus up on my curve. And let's go ahead and instance some things on this curve. So I'm just going to instance uh, on points because the curve is technically just made out of points. I'll just use an icosphere. If I plug that into the instance, you'll see two of them uh, because our sphere only has two points. So I would need to resample it. So it's not just and start and an end so resample curve based on length which means the bigger it is uh, the more samples you get i'll keep this at the default value and they're kind of big so after the fact i'll just do scale elements uh, i mean scale instances scale instances and what i'm going to use for the scale instances for now is just a random value where this is going to be my maximum for the instances this is going to be my minimum for them make sure that's not really zero let's talk about animating them a little bit i did something similar in another tutorial but since then i actually found a better way of doing it basically we're going to sample the curve at different points using the sample curve node and it has a factor mod which means i can plug in a factor from zero to one and it will sample the curve at that point and remember if i bring in the spline parameter uh, the curve has a factor every curve which is just zero at the start one at the end and you know for every point in between it just sort of figures that out and what we can do then is we can use that factor to sample the position tangent and normal of the curve at that point pretty smoothly however after i created these instances i no longer have access to this information for the spline parameter because we don't have a spline here anymore and to do that i will just capture this information using a capture attribute into a factor now capture attribute stores information inside the points in this case inside the instances and then what i can do is i can take this attribute plug it into factor but also take this curve and plug it into the curve we want to actually sample and then if i just do a set position over here on my instances and use this position as their position nothing changes which is to be expected because their factor is already where they are on the curve however what's cool now is that if i just add a math node in between here and by the way i'll shift right click here to get a little better connection going so it's a bit smoother and then i move this you can see that i'm now moving them on the curve however whenever the factor exceeds one it just sort of clamps that to the ends so what we can do then is use the fraction node uh, from the math node the fraction function and then if i just add you can see we're now moving them along the curve now what does fraction actually do uh, basically if we have a value of 1.2 the fraction node uh, gives us 0.2 right it just kind of loops it around the number one so if it's 0 0.5 we just still get 0 0.5 or rather uh, put another way this is just the equivalent of mod one on our uh, function right as if i was using the modulo operator set to one it will be the exact thing uh, but fraction is just you cannot adjust the actual value of the modulo so i'll just use fraction for now uh, I mean, there are some differences uh, other than that, but they're not important right now. So what I can do then is I can just get a scene time node, which I can hook up to this add value. And then when I click play with spacebar, uh, there we go. We are now moving all of our uh, instances uh, basically for free. And then if I just plug that in through a multiply node, set to 0 0.5 or something, uh, I can now actually control that speed. I can even make them move back if I reverse the speed. And I can make them pretty fast. I'll keep this at 0 0.5 for now. I think that looks decent. And uh, really quickly, what I forgot to do though is enable my shortcuts. People do like to see those. So let's talk about uh, a little bit of randomness. I kind of want this to be pushed out. And to do that, I'm just going to use the same set position node. 
Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tangent of this curve. Remember, every curve has a normal pointing away from it and a tangent that is pointing in the direction of the curve at all points. And then I'm going to get the pro cross product of this tangent and some random vector. And I've talked about this before, the cross product of two vectors, if I'm looking at two vectors from the top, for example, will be another vector that is perpendicular to both of them. Right, which means that if I get the cross product of this tangent and some random vector, no matter what it is, I'm going to get a new direction, uh, which is always going to be perpendicular to my curve. However, uh, it will be in any direction, like it can be uh, in any one of the 360 degrees around the tangent. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, so to do that, just get a vector mat, set that to cross product. And then what I'm going to use to get that random vector is just a noise texture. Now the noise texture spits out a color and the color is of course RGB which means that the values go from 0 uh, to 1 which is not what we want because if you want a random coordinate that goes in every direction we basically want minus 1 to be all the way to 1 this is what we want. So to do that we're just going to shift this color uh, with 0 0.5 which will just center everything from minus 0 0.5 uh, all the way to 0 0.5 for the RG and B channels respectively. To do that just get a color, uh, just get a vector map node, set that to subtract, subtract 0 0.5 and then this is going to be all of the preparation we need to get our random vector. Plug that into the cross product uh, reduce the detail and the roughness and then in order to actually be able to push things out um, however I did plug this into the position I actually want this to be the position and this to be the offset the actual cross product so th then we're using both of these sockets and now if I just click play you'll see that not only are they randomly pushed away uh, but they're also moving around uh, because the random vector is actually rated to space and what I can do then is I can use a 4D noise and for the 4D noise I can again plug in the same uh, scene time that we got over here after multiplying it by some factor if I plug that into W uh, now you see that they're changing more and if I change the speed of the movement uh, the randomness also changes correspondingly so I will probably reduce that a little bit so we can sort of see what's happening uh, if I want them to move away more what I'm going to want to do is just scale this vector up a little bit so there we go now they're really moving away quite a bit uh, however you see that some of them are staying really close together this is because we're using their position in space in order to apply this randomness right here and what that means is that since the original position in space is just on a curve and they're really close to each other uh, they're basically going to move um, very similarly whenever the points are close. So to offset that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to this um, multiply, or rather to this W I'm plugging in, the actual ID, which is just a unique number for every instance in this case. And if I just add that to the W, it will offset the randomness a little bit. And that will help them look a bit more random. If you want them to be moving a little bit more sporadically, you can increase the scale. So this is, you can think of the scale as another control for the speed outside of the W. Alright, so this is pretty much going to be it. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the actual cube, for example. If I want to position this curve a little better, so that it's actually matching up with my cube, I'll select both points, right click, subdivide to get a third point which I'll move out. Select all of them, right click, set handle type to automatic. Uh, so that we can just sort of position that in a bit more interesting way. I want both of these to be inside my cube. Maybe I'll rotate them a little bit just to get that arcing going. This is pretty much what I'm going for. Now if I click play it just works. Uh, however of course the longer the curve is the faster they're gonna move because they're always trying to get to the end with the same amount so do keep that in mind. Uh, you could fix that, uh, although not really that easily, if you use the length here instead of the factor, but then you also have to get the actual length in the end. Um, I don't think it's that important, so I won't really bother with that. Uh, so how do we actually get these spheres to merge with our original geometry? Well, to do that, I would need to have this entire setup be on my cube, because then I can use the remesh modifier to combine everything. So to do that, I'll just rename these geometry nodes to liquid 
and then I will go on to my cube where I will add a geometry node setup to the cube and I will select from the drop down up here liquid and now what I need to do is just change the input so that it's not our cube but rather is an object info which is our Bezier curve from before if I just plug that in and also go to my Bezier curve and remove its own modifier suddenly I'll be seeing my my splashes or rather my liquid droplets through the cube uh, I also want to see the cube so I'll take this group input and plug it in the end using a join geometry node there we go just like that uh, just let me plug that in now we're seeing both of them through the cube now the cool thing is that if I add a smooth rather a remesh modifier set to voxel and I also realize uh, these instances because currently remember these icospheres are instances so I'll just realize them uh, they're going to merge together and with the cube so I do want to reduce the size of the voxels in order for us to actually see what's happening so I'll play around with this until I get something I'm comfortable with and if I press play you can see how at this boundary they're merging uh, but they're also merging in between each other whenever they're close enough and also I would take smooth shade uh, so that uh, we can get that smoothing going for free alright so I think they're moving a bit fast I'll reduce them even more so you can see what's happening there we go uh, one more thing over here where we change the randomness we can actually bump up the maximum size and if you want to get more of a smaller droplets or more bigger droplets uh, here's a neat trick for that instead of plugging in this random value directly I'll plug it through a float curve where I will also have this go from 0 to 1 through a float curve and then I'll plug this float curve into another multiplier which will basically be the maximum uh, size of my droplets and then what I can do is change this float curve if it is like this I'll get more smaller droplets if it is like this I'll get bigger ones because I'm basically changing the cutoff right if the cutoff currently is well I'm not changing the cutoff but I'm just changing the way they're distributed so you can get really fancy uh, in this case you would get very few of the ones that are in this quadrant or whatever so that is just one way to get more smaller droplets I wanted to share uh, I probably won't bother with this right now I just wanted to show you that alright so what else can we do well my surface is very uniform and so are the droplets so that's an easy fix that's just a little bit of noise using a set position and since I'm once again going to be using a noise texture I'll just copy this setup over here so we don't have to subtract again and I'll copy a vector scale node so we can adjust the final size and I guess I'll just plug this in directly into offset we can see that's a bit too strong so I'll probably reduce this to something like 0.1 and you can see now as they're just moving through space uh, they're deforming Yep. Uh, however I also want my cube to deform but currently it only has so many faces if I disable the modifier you see that it's just made of this many faces so I'll subdivide it uh, quite a bit something like that and then I can see it uh, it's also affected by the noise but I also want the noise to be animated so that is just a scene time plug directly into W there we go a bit too much again I'll just divide that scene time and this is pretty much what I'm looking for now I also want to get some waves over here on the uh, interface between my solid surface and the droplets and again we're gonna fake that as we usually do uh, first off how do we do that right that is a simply a set position so this is giving me my cube right now so a set position and what I'm going to be actually setting the position to is I want to take the distance from my cubes geometry to the curve so that's a geometry proximity node it gives me the distance straight up and the curve is made out of points so I'll use points so I cannot hook in the curve directly because geometry proximity only works with point clouds and with like meshes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my instance on points uh, and I'm just going to go instance to points which will give me points based off of these instances and then what I can do is I can just plug this into the target directly and then if I just uh, well let's imagine what's actually happening here if this is just the cube or a very uh, low quality representation of the cube then over here when my curve is touching the cube we can actually get this distance from every point of the cube to this point right so like one meter here and at the points that are very close it will be basically zero and then what I can do is I can take this distance plug it through a map range 
and then what I can say, okay, the minimum value will actually be 1, or the maximum will be 0, which means that now values that are over here are 1, and the further away they are, they will become 0. And in fact, they will become 0 after a custom boundary. Everything past this point will actually be 0, uh, because we have clamp on, and this boundary will be from maximum value right here. So after all that, how do I actually want to push these points? Well, I want to push them along the normals of my cube, so that's just a normal and the amount I'm pushing them by the normals will just be scaling this normal vector by the result we got from our map range. So if I plug that into offset, uh, first of all it's going to blow up because this from maximum is too big. If I lower that, uh, you see how it's only affecting wherever our curve is intersecting our mesh. And to actually change the size of it, because I'm pushing them way too much right now, uh, I will just multiply this map range uh, before it goes all the way out. There we go. And now you can see how where my curve is intersecting the cube, we're actually pushing it away. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, this is definitely giving us an interesting result. However, what I want is waves. Okay, so how do we get the waves? Well, instead of doing this, I'm just going to take this 0 to 1 transformation right here that's coming out of the map range. And we already said that that is 1. If, if I'm looking at this cube from the top, right, what do we actually have right here just this situation with this being the place where our curve is intersecting our mesh and over here we have a custom boundary where the value here is zero and the value here is one which is why we're pushing the most in the center if i actually plug this through a float curve plug the zero to one map through a float curve and uh, then i can actually change the way this is so it's not so linear one to zero and what i can do is i can just use a normal distribution looking thing or basically this wave right here, I'm recreating it right now. There we go. So this is basically the wave that we're going for. And if I look at this from above, you can see that now we actually have a wave going. Uh, I will scale this down with another multiply node right here. After the fact, I will probably disable the particles so we can focus up. There we go, this is what we're getting. But it's still not really animated, it's still kind of stuck in space. To animate it, we will use the trick with the fraction once again because this is 0 to 1 transformation, just like the fact that we're doing the exact same thing here. Just take these, move them out so it's, we have a bit more space, add fraction, okay, and then the scene time is what's going to come into here. So I'll take my scene time in seconds, and that will basically be the speed of the waves, uh, which you can also use, I guess, is the scene time we got over here, so that everything's unified, but it's easier to sling that over later, so there's not so much spaghetti going on. And now if I play it, you can see waves are moving out, however, our entire surface is undulating as well. Uh, that's not what we want, and it is happening, because as we are shifting this fraction forward, we're basically going along the length over here. I can't even draw that. We're moving along this curve, basically, so... Um, I really cannot illustrate this any better. Uh, basically, we want to mask out the points that are too far. To do that, just another multiply node, and what we're going to multiply is this initial map range. And if I just link that over, and then press play, you can see that now we have our waves. I will boost them up a little bit, so this will be the size of my waves. Uh, this is the size of my waves, this is the speed of my waves, uh, which if I bring out my initial curve, or well, let's not do that yet, let's talk about how to get more waves, basically to increase, I guess, the the frequency, I guess, I think it's the frequency of my waves. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just multiply this map range before I do anything else to it. And as I increase that, you see we're getting more waves, more and more. Eventually I'm not going to have enough geometry. So there we go. I'll probably leave this at 1.5. I'll probably lower their size again. And now we're getting waves both here and on that other location where we were intersecting. So those are our waves. I'll go ahead and bring back the actual Ike spheres now, which are over here. There we go. And now it looks a bit more believable. I'll probably increase the range. This is how far the waves go, remember. I'll probably also play around with their size. And I guess what I want is, like I said, the speed to be the same that I'm using for the fraction over here. So let me see how that looks. Uh, that is way too slow, so definitely we want to have a different modifier for the speed here. Let's talk a bit 
about materials I guess I'm going to go into my shader preview materials I'll just add one I'll call it water I'll lower the roughness I will max out the transmission and inside the settings I will enable screen space reflections in the settings preview no viewport denoising and also subsurface I mean screen space reflections enable refractions now to actually see the material we need to make sure that over here uh, we're enabling it to the we're actually linking the material to the object not the data so this has to be set to object which means that for the entire object is what this material is applied to uh, and then things should work correctly just like that uh, one way to make it run even better because 20 fps is really not that great uh, is to just hide the remesh in which case you would get pretty decent numbers Hide the remesh. Uh, if you want to preview it, you can just add a remesh modifier. One of them only active in the viewport, and the other only in the final render with like a smaller voxel size. Uh, however, do keep in mind that the voxel size also dictates the distance uh, at which these points will merge. So a smaller voxel size uh, will actually sharpen that up. So really, you have to uh, keep this in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is that the number of liquid drops you get actually depends on this resample curve. Currently, all of these droplets are kind of moving in the same speed down our curve. And we can change that if instead of using a set value for the multiply of the scene time over here, uh, we just use a random value. And what that means is that, for example, now some of the points will be moving with 0.1, others will barely be moving. And there will also be some that are not moving at all, like this one over here I'm seeing isn't really moving. So that's how you can also offset the speed, which can also help with uh, l making it look less repetitious, just adding more randomness. Uh, one more thing, if after the fraction you add another add modifier and you set that to minus one, basically that's going to offset all of the instances factor to zero, which means they'll disappear. But then if I change this to be zero, you see how they're flowing in now. So you can get this very cool flowing effect if you just animate this variable and that will also be the speed. Uh, yep, so that is another important note, how to get liquid. Uh, don't make it over one because then you'll be trimming the other end. Uh, which I guess means you can just start from whatever end you want. Yeah, so if it's one, it starts from this end. So yeah, after the fraction, before the instances, there you go. Also, since now, as you can see, this value controls where our points actually are on the curve. As long as I disable the time scale so they're not moving, that's what this max is. I plugged it out real quickly uh, along with the add value we just added. Uh, basically, you can see there's waves here when they really shouldn't be anymore. Uh, that's a very simple fix. Instead of turning the instance on points into points, uh, what I'm going to use is actually the points after I have set their position uh, to get the distance. And so now you can see how that disappears. And if I click play and then change this value, uh, only once we're close enough do those start to appear. Of course, the finishing touch is to plug out some of these controls into your modifier stack. So I'll just get a group input and plug out things like, I guess, the speed of the whole simulations, which is uh, this value here. So you can plug it out, press N, and over here I can rename it to time scale. I can give it a minimum and maximum, in this case I want, and then I can just uh, control the speed from my modifiers, for example, and you can do this for whatever you want. I'll probably have this set up with all the controls on my Gumroad. We can also get this project. And yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, sub for more, like, share, um, and I'll probably mock more things if I feel like it. Ciao.